Hello there, everybody. Well, we've finally left the Nintendo era for Mega Man, and we're now going to take a slight detour to the Sega Genesis of all places, with Mega Man The Wily Wars. Now, I would like to thank William for allowing me to borrow his copy of this game. I can't find my Wily Wars! And if you know anything about this game, then you know that this copy is not exactly on the up and up. I'll explain. This game was only released physically in Japan and Europe. A North American one was planned, but it got canned due to graphical issues. However, North Americans would finally get a chance to play this game on something called the Sega Channel, which was a device that you could hook up into your Sega Genesis and television. This allowed online services through a prescription fee. Players on the Sega Genesis can, through this, play games online, get access to game demos, and get cheat codes. Another great feature is that you can play games through the system that are not available in stores, i.e. Mega Man The Wily Wars. It was pretty revolutionary, first example of downloadable content. So I do apologize if this offends any gaming sensibilities out there, but I did get a request to review this game, and I was interested. So I played it, and here are my thoughts. This is my review of Mega Man The Wily Wars for the Sega Genesis. So the story of this game, such as it is, is that Dr. Wily has gone back into time to defeat Mega Man once and for all. Time travel. Why not? This causes Mega Man to relive the events of his first three adventures. After overcoming them, Mega Man challenges Dr. Wily in his brand new Wily Tower. Here, Mega Man challenges three new robot masters, Buster Rod G, Mega Water S, and Hyperstorm H. He must battle through them in order to get to Wily himself. Kind of like Game of Death, if you think about it. The story really does not matter all that much here, because Wily Wars is really just a compilation of previous Mega Man adventures. This game truly is Super Mario All-Stars, just with the Blue Bomber. You can play through Mega Man 1, 2, and 3 and do it in any order that you wish. This game possesses four file slots that you can save your games, which eliminates the need for passwords. The gameplay for all three Mega Man games here are similar to the original NES ones. But they have received the Sega Genesis upgrades, with 16-bit graphics, music, and sound effects. You know, honestly, it took me a little while to get used to Mega Man's character model here. I guess after playing the original 6, I, I guess I just got used to that design. Plus, there was something about his run cycle that was just a little off to me. I don't know, I guess I'm just nitpicking. This game still looks great with 16-bit features, as everything is colorful and vibrant. But... And it may just be me here, but the gameplay feels a bit slower. Like, I can't quite put my finger on it, but it just feels that way. A good example are the boss fights against the dragon from Mega Man 2 or the Yellow Devil. Although I'm not complaining, as I was finally able to beat him legit in this version. Yes! Huh. Well, you know, Top Spin really was his weakness. Who'd have thunk it? Also, a side note, in Mega Man 2, you don't have an easy mode option. You just play in difficulty, which honestly is really no big deal. That's pretty much all I can say about it, as again, they all play exactly like the originals. As for the music, well, well, here's the thing. When it comes to music on this game, look, you're either gonna like it, or you won't. The Sega Genesis style had its own unique way, and it was very different from the Nintendo. If you're NES purist, you may hate it, but as a fan of Sega, I did like these compositions here. this one particular one that reminds me of Pizza Power from Ninja Turtles for some reason. I 
I have played way too many games. Now after you beat Mega Man 1, 2, and 3, here is where the fun really gets started. Because now, Wily's Tower becomes unlocked. This is a seven stage section. Three for the new robots and four for the tower itself. The big thing here is that before each stage begins, you have access to all the weapons and items from the previous three Mega Man games. You are free to mix and match any of these powers. This gives you a ton of replay value, mixing Elect Man's Thunder Beam with Woodman's Leaf Shield, or the Magnet Beam with the Rush Jet? That's too much power for one man to have. Now when you pick the right powers for a given stage, you can absolutely break the section in half. But I'm guessing that was kind of the point. This part is a real treat for Mega Man fans. The combinations you come up with are a lot of fun. Now as far as the gameplay experience goes, I still think that the original NES games are the best way to go. Like I said before, many purists may not like what Wily Wars offers with the different graphics, Genesis music, and the slower gameplay. But I still feel that Mega Man The Wily Wars is still worth your time if you are a hardcore Mega Man fan. It is also a bit weird that this was a Sega Genesis exclusive and this wasn't on the Super Nintendo. But you know what? As a Mega Man fan, I am glad I played this. Overall, I find Mega Man The Wily Wars to be a novel experience and a neat little bit of Mega Man history. Well, there you have it. There's my review of Mega Man The Wily Wars for the Sega Genesis. A bit different, but still fun. Now, I will not be doing a review of Mega Man 7 because we already have a review of that game here on this channel, thanks to William. He did one several years ago. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check it out. Speaking of William, he will be joining me on my next Mega Man review when we take a look at Mega Man 8. So until then, keep on gaming, and take care. Hey there everyone, did you like this video? If you did, why not give us a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment and watch some more of our stuff. Also, if you really want to keep up with the Brotherhood of Gaming, such as myself, William Morris, or Eugene, you should really follow us on our Twitters, links provided below, so you can see what's coming up in the future. And since, you know, we have to play these games sometimes and record them, why not join us on our Twitch page where you can hang out with all of us as we do so and chit chat about the games that we love so much. Lastly, if you want to help keep our dreams alive, you can support us in any number of ways, either by continuing to view our videos, like them, share them with all your friends and family and your peeps and your girlfriends, or you can also join our small Patreon and throw all your spare cash away. We'll even give you a shout out. Once again, thank you all and have a wonderful day.